Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. On today's uh, video we are going to go over the basics of uh, installing something like a bedroom or a living room um, and just kind of go over the basics of, of getting your room set up, get your tax strip in the right spot, uh, how to put your padding down and then stretching and trimming your carpet in. And before we get started, I'd just like to ask um, that you please subscribe and hit the like button and trying to get some growth on the channel and I'm going to keep doing videos. i got a lot of different projects coming up and so we'll try to do some things that will hopefully help some people um, tackle some projects on their own. So let's go inside and uh, show you what we got going on. Okay, so this is kind of an overview of the room. I'm going to show you what we're, how we're doing it today. Um, it's got you know, a little tile entryway we're going to go around and then uh, of course it, it ties into the staircase and hallway and all that but we're just going to pretend like it's just a square room and and try to show you some basics on this today. So the tax trip's down um, and I was going to add another piece behind it but this looks like it is triple grip tack strip and see how they got the spacing on that it's about a quarter to three eighths of an inch that's what you want so what I'll probably do on this is go around and just add some nails to it just to give it a little more strength when I'm stretching so these are the nails I use you could just use some little box nails or I, I get these from the carpet supply house um, so they're just but you could, you know, go into any hardware store and just get you some box nails. And, you know, if you got to put down your new tax strip, of course, you're going to want to make sure that pins are angled on this tax strip and you want them pointing towards the wall. So make sure you've got them pointing towards the wall because when you stretch it out, that's what holds it in place. But that looks like good spacing there. So in front of this tile, that has got a little more gap than I want. So I am actually going to take that tax strip out and just replace it with some new and bring that a little closer. Hey, I know I said I wasn't going to show you any of the rooms I was doing, but I'm going to show you this bedroom because I don't want something that messed up on the sound in the other room. But this room, I, as you can see, I um, double 
tax strap, backed up a tax strap for another piece. It's just kind of a habit I'm in, but um, this small of a room. I just like to be able to know that that tax strip is, that carpet when I'm trimming and stuff like that is not going to come off. So, you know, when you single strip with that thin stuff, it just, it just doesn't seem like enough most of the time. So, anyways, we'll lay this out, get some measurements, and I'll have a little piece of the back of the closet, but the room's only about eight and a half feet wide. Uh, so we'll just lay it on this direction here. So just make sure you put your staples four inches apart. You don't want that pad bunching up when you're stretching it onto the tack strip. When you're stretching your carpet, sometimes it'll kind of try to pull with the carpet. But if you have to, you can take a tape measure and just kind of figure that out. But I usually just guess it, guess it close and then just go straight back with that. Be careful you don't cut too deep. You don't want to cut through your second layer of pad, or your base layer, I guess, your main layer. Okay, this room is ready to go. Got it all trimmed in and stapled down. So we're gonna cut some carpet. Okay, so I got the carpet cut in the room. So we're just gonna start uh, rolling it out. I kind of like to roll it out on a little bit of an angle. It just makes it uh, easier because the room is actually more narrow than the, than the carpet. So. the edge here so it doesn't uh, scrape the paint. And then just kind of back roll like this. So another thing I didn't mention is cutting your carpet yourself or you're having a place where you purchase it cut it make sure you cut it an extra three inches up the wall is what I usually go you don't want to give yourself a little extra room to work and I do have to put a seam on the in this room to catch this tile so I'm gonna put it on the opposite side of the room where there's not very much traffic it makes it a longer seam but I'd rather have it over there out of the way See, I just want to make sure I catch that tile there. And then another thing you can do is uh, maybe take some measurements from the wall to your carpet edge just to make sure you're square in the room. So we'll do that real quick. Extra carpet. carpet is made in rows and so this does that's what that point does right there it just separates those rows and then we will just use a cushion back cutter make a nice uh, good edge for that seam to go together this is a good quality 
um, three inch tape. Uh, make some six inch tape too. Three inch should be good for this this uh, project. Make sure you keep that same tape centered. That's what those black lines in the center are for. Okay, so we got the uh, seam done. It's uh, all cooled off. And then you walk over here. What seam? I don't see anything. That's when you know it's a good seam. So we will get this power stretcher set up and show you how we're gonna stretch this room in. Okay, so what we want to do is I just set this. Um, I want to set the carpet on these pins about, and I'm actually just going to probably go length this tile here, and then I'm going to stretch across, and that'll hold that. And then I will uh, set that back wall, and then I'm going to pull everything to the other end of the room. is pretty simple to put together. Um, if you go rent one, I, uh, I don't know if you, you can see that, but I just use a four by four that I carpeted, about a six foot in length, um, and it just so I don't use a foot on the end of that stretcher. If you rent one, you know you'll probably just get a foot like that, which works. Um, but I just got used to using the six foot four by four
okay, now we're just gonna finish setting this back wall and uh, in front of the tile over there, and then we're gonna pull everything to that end of the room. So what we're gonna do, the goal is we're just gonna, everything's gonna be stretched into that far corner over there. So I'll start stretching this way and just work my way across and then start over here and finish up all the way down. So this is a pretty good size room, so I wanna, I don't want wrinkles over showing up, so I'm going to get pretty good stuff here. And I've seen, I've worked for guys, those take a hammer, crease it on there, and they are setting it there, and they've got their little hand tools. This is just called a spreader, and it'll just, it's easy to put that on there, and when you let off, and then I usually just take it and rub it on the pins a little bit. But you can see it's holding right there. One other thing, if you're using a board, make sure you've got that, your, your uh, pole isn't right at the edge. We want that board to go across the studs in the wall. We don't want to be putting that uh, the end of that board through the wall. I mean, it, I've done it before. There's a lot of pressure on the end of that, so make sure you you've got some, uh, you know, a foot and a half or something, or a foot. Just just make sure you're catching some studs in the wall. We're going to use wall trimmer. Um, this is. Makes it nice when the baseboard's up, like uh, three eighths of an inch or something, because I need to put the carpet in there. But this baseboard's all the way to the floor, so just when it's like that, you gotta be a little more careful. See, I don't know if you can see that, but it's about perfect right there.
Okay, we are done and cleaned up with this living room. So, everything's trimmed nice and looks good and cleaned up. So that is time to move on to the next part of the... Okay everyone, um, I am going to wrap this video up. I just wanted to kind of show what, how to in install a living room or a small bedroom. Um, like I said, I'm going to go into <clears throat> more details on doing seams and stuff like that. But if you had just a room that was under 12 um, with no seams, you know, that's what my goal was, is just to kind of show you the basics of that kind of stuff, you know. <clears throat> so, um, thanks for watching. I'll ask you one more time, please subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit and see if there's much interest in uh, these kind of videos, you know, I'm trying to help people, you know, maybe I know that. It seems like in today's world, my friend will appreciate me saying that, in today's world, um, contractors are getting a little scarce, at least in my part of the, of the country. But um, it's not bad to learn to do a few things on, you know, and try a few things. So hopefully this helped. So uh, please uh, like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.